longer submissive. We are more like we have this masculine energy now happening. <laughs> Things that have just become upside down. Women no longer submit to, to their husbands because we feel like, oh, do you think I'm a, I'm a slave to you? Because a lot of women, we have been misled, we've been so um, fostered with this uh, femininism thingy mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we say, oh, don't let no one tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a man can do, you can do. But they've kind of like changed the direction of what it really does mean mm -hmm. to be submissive. Yes. They've changed it. They've messed it all up. Yeah. yeah. It is really beautiful for a woman to be submissive. Yeah. But we don't really understand it, do we? It's, it's, your, it's your safe place. And if we don't, then we're very vulnerable. And this is where everything becomes really chaotic, yeah? Extremely. And then the woman will use her own hands to destroy her own home. Yes. Extremely, Not extremely vulnerable. Advice outside of our home from anyone. Nobody. Listen, let me Nobody. tell you this. Let me tell you this. Okay. So, you know, there was um, a time that I was speaking to someone on this matter. And I said, I, Joseph Chidebero Kechuku, I will not marry a woman who has a mentor in her pastor or her bishop or anyone else other than me. Never in this life. Wow. You see, if you follow what I just explained to you earlier about the man being directly under Christ. Of course, Christ is under God and the woman is under the man. There is a hierarchy that stems from heaven. This hierarchy is the hierarchy that established marriage on earth. And so while God the Father is the head of Christ, Christ is directly the head of the man. And the man is the head of the woman. What that means is that <laughs> Christ, who is a priest, now has the man standing in the shadows of his priesthood. So the man has become the priest of his home. So the woman actually has a priest in her husband. If this husband is obediently standing in the shadow of that priesthood of Christ in his home. So he becomes the spiritual head of his home. Now, how can a woman then ignore this priesthood and submit herself under the priesthood of another? In other words, what she does is then every spiritual instruction of what should be done at home, she takes it from a pastor. Everything that has, has to happen in her home, she goes to meet her bishop. That is an absolute anomaly. It would destroy and scatter that home. You will never in your life see peace in that home. Why did Sarah call Abraham my Lord? Because Abraham was standing under the priesthood of a Lord. The same Lord that is Lord over both Abraham and Sarah. It is not just a title. Your husband is your priest. He's your pastor. He's your Lord. And hopefully he is actually genuinely standing in the shadows of that priesthood. This is exactly how it should be. How can I marry now and my wife has to go and have... Do you know that when a woman has a mentor outside of her home or she has another priest that she listens to other than her husband, do you know what happens? Her loyalty automatically goes to that mentor and that priest, not her husband. Whoever mentors you and becomes priest over you is the person who automatically wins the right to suck and take your loyalty. 
You don't have to ask for it. It is very spontaneous and it is automatic. So when a woman is finding a mentor outside of her home, she will never truly submit to the man she is married to. Because the one who mentors her, the one who actually nourishes her spiritually, is the one that her loyalty will go to, whether she likes it or not. That's why whatever my papa says, or so-called pastor says, whatever my bishop says is what I am going to do. Go to so many homes in Africa. You're going to see the women. They don't take any instruction from their husbands. They take it from these preachers. Those preachers can actually turn around and sleep with them because they have become automatically husbands to these women. Their husbands at home are now guests living with them under the same roof. As a woman, you must learn to transfer your loyalty to your husband. And as a husband, you can't just get up and say, Oh, Joseph Oketiku said, you must give me loyalty. No. Where are you standing? Are you also standing under that shadow of the priesthood of Christ? Because this thing is a chain reaction. It is all interconnected. If you're not standing there, who is the woman giving loyalty to? You have to stand in that shadow. And when you know you have properly stood in that shadow and you are now officially the, the spiritual head of your home, there is no reason on earth why your woman should be running to a pastor to get instructions of what happens in your home. So men are even so confused. They are the ones supporting and encouraging their wives to do this. You must grow into a place of authority. Be a real man by burying yourself into the things of God and by discharging your duties as a priest after the order of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ. That's when your wife renders every single submission and loyalty to you without any stress. It goes freely. You don't beg for it. Mark my words. You never ever have to beg for it. That's why you see women today, they are now taking the roles of men and playing it. So it's almost as if we don't have men around. We have too many males, but we don't have men. That's why the Bible said, and listen to this, the Bible says something very interesting. And I always try to explain this to people. The Bible says, in those days, 10 women will run to one man and say, please marry us. You don't have to do anything. Just let us bear your name. Ten. And it's probably going to be more than ten. Why? The Bible is not saying that ten women will run to one male. The Bible says they will run to one man. There's a difference between male and man. That you have your whatever thing that you have in between your legs and then you have some beard and mustache does not make you a man. It makes you a male. But if you are not a real man, you don't come into this quotation of the scripture. You are not one of the people. The women are going to be running to real men. Because in those days and those days are now, there will be a huge scarcity of real men. A massive scarcity of real no, men. No, no, it's and it's like happening already. Of real men. That's what the Bible was talking about. And as we speak right now, the scarcity of real men has come upon our world. Go and talk to any girl out there. Many of them are so terribly disillusioned as for what marriage is really all about, as for relationships and all kinds of stuff, because the men who are supposed to be doing this have all become bouncing baby men. They are like babies now. At the age of 40, a man is behaving like he's in his 60, like a 60 year old. You see 45, 60, 50 year olds behaving like babies. They don't have any single spiritual standing in their homes. They don't have any knowledge of anything. Just living life as it comes. But we were built to become the gatekeepers. We were built to become the spiritual warriors in our homes. Protecting our wives. Protecting our children. Men are supposed to be the warriors. 
Today, men are even, some men are even weaker than a lot of women today. And truth be told, we have to say it. You go into so many homes. It is the woman who is thinking out what has to be done in the home. She goes to tell her husband, the guy will say, baby, whatever you think is okay, anything you do is okay by me. Are you freaking kidding me? The man should be a question, should be a solution giver. How many men today will watch their wife come with questions and they will be able to provide answers? Because you're not providing the answer. The woman is going to someone else. If I was a pastor, your wife is coming to me every day for answers and you are a man living in the house. If I was a corrupt pastor, and we have too many of them today, I would suddenly grow into having a soul tie with your wife. That it's called temporary soul tie. And once that temporary soul tie is initiated, anything can happen between her and I any moment. And she will be so happy that whatever that is going to happen has happened. Because now automatically, I'm almost acting like the husband to your wife. And yet you're married. Chasing small girls up and down the whole place. You are not a real man. Going to go and get money and buy food in the house doesn't make you a man, to be honest with you. And it's not by making command and issuing orders. It is by actually living up to it as a man. You don't just yeah. come and demand it. No, you have to live to it. And if you have lived up to it and the woman comes and she's still so obsessed with other people, then she does not belong to you. She needs to go. Don't marry such a person because the signs will show up even while you are dating her. Don't marry. Don't proceed with the marriage. That's why the Bible said the woman should submit to the man in all things. I explained this earlier. When the Bible is saying, when God is saying, submit to your husband in all things, what he's actually saying indirectly is submit to me, your God, in all things. Because already he is the head of Christ, Christ is the head of the man, and the man is the head of the woman. And so when the woman submits to the husband, she is indirectly submitting to Christ and then submitting to God. So it is not the man. God is actually saying the best way to even rewrite that scripture is submit to your to me, submit to me through your husband in all things. Submit to me through your husband. So when you're looking at that scripture as a woman, throw away all this stupid feminism rubbish. It doesn't have any bearing in this situation. You stop looking at the man, look at God.